I received some meal. Not some meal. In my last week video, where I tuned up a bit this uh, late, there were some very interesting comments. This kind of comments I really like. The comments that can open a debate. We can talk about it. So please keep them coming. One of the comments was, is it not possible to change the angle of the headstock? Well, on every machine it's possible. On this machine I have to work with shims. There are shims here below because the headstock is in fact uh, mounted on the same rail than the tailstock. Here's a shim. Here is one. And here is one. Four bolts that holds the bed on the base. This column is hollow and the bolts hold the headstock in place. They are from down, from the inside, up. And here's the engine room. This is the electric motor. And up here are two gearboxes. Now, for me, it's impossible to put my arm in here, go up to loosen the bolts. If I want to do that, I have to take at least the gearboxes out. But to take them out, I need to take the motor out and then loosen the belts because it's a belt driven system and then maybe I can tweak a bit and then assemble again and give it a try and see that it doesn't work and take it all apart again and no way you understand now why I don't want to play around with trying to fix this uh, alignment problem with the headstock I will go with it as is. I received mail this week from Harold from the amateur redneck workshop. So Harold, as you can see, your sticker is already on the cheap door, will not fall off, no problem. He also sent some spares. Thank you very much Harold, I really appreciate that. I like stickers. Now Harold asked me also in his little note here, if it's usual that here in Belgium we mark first the family name on the envelope and then the first name, so last name, first name, yes. Here it's a bit postal tradition I suppose. So Harold, I hope this answered a bit your question. There was also a question about the carriage lock on this lathe. And I always say there is no carriage lock on this machine. In fact, well, yes, there is. It's one stupid little thing here. And it doesn't lock very much. See? That's why I take it off and I never use it. I lock the carriage with the lead screw. There's always a little bit of movement. But from the moment the carriage is against the threads of the lead screw, it doesn't move anymore. Now, let's start the debate about uh, aligning the lathe and the tailstock and all the other things. There was a comment in one of my previous videos a long time ago and someone said, hey, that's nice, you see things a bit like a puzzle. And that's exactly what it is. To check if there's a twist in the bed of the lathe, there are several systems we can use. Now, the most known is, of course, uh, using a machinist level, a very expensive thing that almost nobody has and I don't have either. But we can do Lucky I am, I have a cheap level thing here with 
a laser. I'm gonna put this level on the bed over here and the laser point will be on the blackboard. I'm gonna put the same level on the other side and the laser point will be on the blackboard. And of course the point must be exact at the same height. It will not mean that the bed is level, it's not at all even, it's not important, but it must be straight. Mark it with a pencil, just a little dot. That's all. I'm gonna move the level to the other side. Exactly at the same height and the laser point. There can always be a little bit dirt or whatever on this level is absolutely not precise. And so it gives us a good idea. But I think the lathe must make straight cuts, which means the tool must move in a straight line. No twist in that way, no twist in the other way. So the best place to install the laser point is of course in the tool post. If now I move the bed, I marked it again with the chalk on the blackboard just for video purposes, but do this on paper or cardboard or whatever. Now, if you don't have a level like this one, now this is really cheap, you can buy one, it's not a problem. Steal the laser pen of your grandson and put that thing in the tool post. That will work too. We interrupt this transmission for a little moment to answer a question from Joe. Joe asked me if I wanted to show the depth stop on my drill press. Of course. Here it is. Let me show you. You wanna drill a hole 10 mm deep, for example. You touch off, don't worry, there's no power on this machine, so I can put my hands wherever I want, no problem. This is zero. You install the depth stop here, 10, yeah. lock it. Ready to drill, 10 millimeters deep. I think it wouldn't be too hard to make something like this. After all, it's just a ring with a set screw. If you don't have place on this side, I'm sure you can mount one. The other side will be even much easier because here you're always in this handles, it's not really easy to work. The other side would be much better. So Drew, here's your depth stop. Now that we know that there's no twist in the bed, we're gonna check if the tailstock is in line with the headstock. And for that, first I'm gonna use the learn in school method and after I'm gonna show what's wrong with it. It's not completely wrong, but you will see that there are some issues with it. But if I wanna install my workpiece with two center points here, I need a center in the headstock. I don't have. So first let's make one. I installed here my extra long boring bar, the other side of course, this is a cutting side and the tool post is just nipped a little bit so it can move but there will be no, not too much play, right? If now this bar is pushed against the inside of the taper my dial indicator will move. 
if this bar follows exactly the angle I need, this indicator will not move. So let's do the test. I already installed. I have to go back here about to zero. Take my machine. I press with hand this bar against the tape. Of course, only the tip is touching. The shank is not touching, it's only the tip. If I twist too hard by hand, you can see the indicator moving. No movement on the indicator, which means my top slide is at the exact angle of the taper inside this spindle. Let's make the same taper. Perfect. This system is always repeatable. You can take the chuck off and put it back on. Right. The chuck is back in the same position as before. Right? No movement. I installed here my stop. The carriage is repeatable. Yeah? There's no carriage stop on this machine. So I disabled the gear train. Nothing moved here. Now it's blocked. There's a little bit of play, but no problem. The end of the taper is also the end of the travel of this top slide. So it can go further, it cannot crash into the jaws or nothing. Voila! I drilled and tapped the other end here for only one reason because normally when the taper is fixed there's no movement but you never know I had to cut this taper and that's why I used the draw bar yeah? and here's a little recess when I knock it out with a piece of uh, I don't know what. I risk to damage the tapered side here so that's why there's this recess and in fact I made two. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with it but I have now one spare. Make sure there's no junk in it. Clean. Now the idea is of course to cut a light pass of this part but I have to hold it because like this it's never gonna spin it's gonna stop with the cutting forces I made this uh, easy made little thing here with a screw to hold it in place first I wanted to weld it but I always start from the idea that we have limited tooling I think a drill and a tap is much cheaper than welding equipment so if you don't have it is possible to make a dog looks like a six huh? right if this surface is finished of course we don't want to score it, we're going to put a shim between. 
but in this case it's not yet finished so no problem cut is finished and I measured over this diameter and this diameter there's a difference of one tenth of a millimeter this side is one tenth bigger now normally when you do this kind of test you use a dead center if you don't have a dead center kill one uh, no don't kill your life centers but I'm not gonna tweak with the headstock for the moment because this life center is game over. You hear the bearings making very weird noises and it's jumping around when I put the dial indicator on it. So this one not good. I ordered a new one but it's not arrived yet. Now normally if I run the indicator on this side of this bar should be no movement and there is no movement the needle is just dump, jumping around a bit in these uh, these lines you see here and I think these come from the life center movement of the life center because here there's much lines and here you hardly see them so that could be a good theory I installed the indicator the other side and now normally I'm gonna put the zero of course and now normally we should see this difference of one tenth oops there you go even a little bit more according to the indicator now what to do if I don't have a dial indicator then we can use filler gauges and this is a 10 millimeter drill bit of course the shank side and then you install a drill bit that you can just feel the drag and this should be the same drag which it is take the part out flip it around do the same measurements without moving anything here and this one doesn't go in anymore this side is one tenth bigger than this side so here normally should work you can go far enough here as you can see fill gauge goes in how can we measure the difference take a smaller one put it in and you will feel the difference when I bought my late I was so excited that maybe I drove a bit too fast to bring it home and it fell off the trailer and it was overrun by a freight train in the middle of the highway it's not a real story the result is that the headstock and the tailstock looks a bit like this yeah, not in line as long as we can put our workpiece between the centers and we manage to align them you can tweak the tailstock very easily you can make precise parts it's perfectly possible you loosen a bit the <coughs> quill take the part out show it to your mama put it the other way in and make other features on it if it's needed all this is perfectly possible with this system the only thing to think about is to never loosen and move the tailstock otherwise these two points will not be in line anymore always keep the tailstock locked at the same 
place. So as I just showed on the blackboard, the system we use to align the two points doesn't tell if the tailstock is aligned with the bed or not. We can put the points in line, but we have no news of the tailstock. You can buy these precision bars, there's lots of different models to put between the centers and then you can measure the difference between this distance and this distance. And again, the same problem, it just tells the line between the two points and not if the tailstock is in line. Maybe it's twisted or it's a bit up or down, you don't know. Plus, these precision bars are very expensive and to use them maybe once every two years, I don't think it's worth the cost. And the most important system of lining two points doesn't take in account the cutting loads, the cutting forces. You put a chuck on this, you put a large center in here and while cutting the old part, the tailstock, the chuck, everything is moving, is flexing. And with this flexing we have to make precise parts, okay? So, now I'm gonna show the system I use. I'm not telling you it's the best system, but for me it's a quick and easy way. I turned a slug in just a piece of uh, leftover, whatever, and this diameter is exact the same as the diameter of the quill of my headstock, uh, tailstock of course. The tailstock is fixed, yeah, is locked. Now I'm gonna bring it together, lock it here. Let's see what we've got. I see the needle jumping around a bit. Not even one hundredth of a millimeter of difference between this diameter and this diameter. So this part now we have checked also it is in line. The movement of the needle you see is the movement of the saddle. Let's check the height. Indicator on top. Yeah. Set the zero. Let's see what we've got. We're going up one hundredth of a millimeter. Ten microns, okay. And here's jumping down two hundredths, which means this my part here is one hundredth lower than this point. I think nothing to worry about. Another way of turning between centers, which I think is a little bit easier, and it was also mentioned in the comments, is make a center point in the jaws. Take a piece of, uh, which is uh, round, it's even blue, I used it only once. Put it in here, turn your taper at 60 degrees, so it will be centered. Yeah? And then you can install the part like this between centers and then you need a late dog that uh, takes the jowls of the chuck. What I showed you here is only a glimpse of course of all the possibilities we have to tweak our machines. I know there are people who are watching this with tons of experience in machining, so I don't think they learned anything new. There's also some of you that would like to learn something. I think it's a good idea to use the 
comment section if you have something to add at my explications here or if you have a question don't be afraid put it in the comments learn from each other that's the idea